task 27 wants us to go ahead and freeze, uh, use the freeze pane to make only the first four rows visible as we're scrolling through. So what we'll do is we'll put our cursor in A5, and we'll go to the View tab here at the top. We'll go to Freeze Pane in the Windows group, and we'll go ahead and select Freeze Panes. Now when I scroll down, that those first four rows are always visible. Task 28 wants us to go ahead and change our view to Page Layout. And then it wants us to go ahead and hide, hide rows 2 and 3. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to left-click and then select both rows 2 and 3. Then I'll right-click and click Hide. Task 29 wants us to go ahead and zoom the document and then save this as a custom view. So we'll go to the View tab here at the top. We'll click Zoom. We'll select in the custom 150%. We'll click OK. Then what we want to do is still in the View tab. We're in the Workbook Views. We'll click Custom Views. And we want to call this Page Zoom. Notice both P and Z, Z are capitalized. We'll click OK. Task 30 wants us to go to the top performers here. And in cell B2, it wants us to go ahead and put a formula. So we'll put our cursor there. We'll click the Insert Function button. This is what they're looking for with top is use the max function. So we'll go ahead and type in max, click OK. We'll click Go. And what we want to do is go to the 2010 worksheet and we just want to go ahead and select that range so it's going to look for the the highest number in this group and we'll click OK. Task 31 wants us to go ahead and uh, go to the top performers worksheet and we're going to determine the highest sales number in 2011 and that's cell B3 so we'll put our cursor there we'll go ahead and click insert function here at the top we'll type in max click go click OK and then what we want to do is in number one, go ahead and go to the sales 2011. And we're going to go ahead and just select the numbers in column D. And we'll click OK. Task 32 wants us to go ahead and correct a formula that's found in on the combined sales worksheet. And what we're going to look at first is D3. Now this is kind of a tricky question. Um, looking at this, I noticed first that we go ahead, need to go ahead and add uh, parentheses around this first argument, the subtraction, because they want that done first. Um, the parentheses make sure that Excel does that calculation first. The other thing that I see uh, is this is the wrong sheet reference. Now, I can go ahead and uh, here I can type in here, or I could delete out this here, go to the sales 2010, and select D3 here. We'll go ahead and click Enter. Um, and that fixes our formula for this one. Notice that I still have to correct the rest of these. So I'll show you something, another way to fix this formula. We'll go ahead and put our parentheses in like we did before. Um, but this time, what I'll do is I'm just going to change this right here to say sales 2010 apostrophe. Oh, it's already there. And then I want to change this reference here to say D4. We'll go ahead and click Enter. Um, you could do that manually through each of these other rows. But what I'll do is I'm just going to use the drag fill. Notice I put uh, put my cursor on the bottom right-hand corner of that cell, change to a black cross, and I'll just go ahead and copy that formula down. And because this is a relative reference, notice it changes the D column and adds the parentheses for me. Task 33 wants us to go ahead and insert a column and insert a title on the combined sales worksheet. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and left click E and notice it went ahead and highlighted the entire column. From here I'm going to go ahead and right click on the E and I'm going to click insert. Notice that all of the information that was in E was pushed to the right and that is now column F. What I want to do is go ahead and add the title percent total. And what I want to do is hit enter to set that text. Task 34 wants us to go ahead and um, do a manual formula on the combined sales worksheet. So what we want to do is go to that worksheet. We'll go ahead and put our cursor here in F3. And this is not a predefined function. So we're going to go ahead and manually hand key this whole formula in. And what we want to do is go ahead and hit the equal sign on our keyboard to start the function. We want to go ahead and select Elizabeth sales. So we'll go ahead and select E3. We'll go ahead and hit our slash button to begin the vision. And what we're ultimately going to do is select this cell, because that's what we want to divide it by. We'll go ahead and select it. 
but um, this is a relative reference and we need to make it an absolute reference. So there are a few ways to do this. You can manually hand key in a dollar sign before the E and the eight, or if you go ahead and uh, just hit the F4 key on your keyboard, notice it went ahead and put it through. I could keep hitting F4 and it will randomly put the dollar sign in between just one or two or remove everything. And we'll go ahead and click enter. Now, the reason that, that those dollar signs are important is because I'm gonna go ahead and use the drag fill. Notice my black cursor. I'm gonna click and drag down. Now, notice in this formula, the first one, it's E3 divided by E8. This one, it's E4 divided by E8. Notice that the E8 cell reference does not change. And that's because we changed it from a relative reference to an absolute reference by adding those dollar signs. Task 35 wants us to go ahead and fix the, fu the function in the overall column. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put our cursor here. Um, the first thing it wants us to do is to change this right here, this comma in between the two sums. And what we're looking for is a greater, greater than symbol there. And then what we want to do is put our quotation around profitable and marginal. And then we'll go ahead and click enter. And notice it went ahead and fixed all of them for us. Task 36 wants us to go ahead and define a named range. Where we need to go is the commissions rates. And what we want to do is select the range A2 to C6. Now there are a few ways to do this, but the easiest way to define a named range is once you select your range, go to the name box here at the top and go ahead and just type in bonus. Make sure you hit enter. And that's now a named range. Task 37 is a little bit of a difficult question. There's multiple parts to it. Let's go to begin by defining our named range. We'll go to the com commission rates worksheet. We'll go to A2 to C6. And what we need to do is to de define this range as the name bonus. So I'm going to go ahead and click on our name box, which is the easiest way to name a range. We're going to type in bonus. We'll hit enter key to set that range. Now let's go ahead and go to the combined sales worksheet. It wants us to go ahead and, and F2, go ahead and type the name bonus pay and hit enter. It went ahead and copied the formatting. Now in F3 is where, where it gets complicated. We're going to actually use the VLOOKUP to uh, find the bonus for each. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and click insert function. We're going to go ahead and type in VLOOKUP here at the top. Click OK. The lookup value is going to be E3 for this. The table array is going to be our named range, which we just typed in, bonus. And then the column index is going to be 3, because that's the third column in that index. And then we're going to go ahead and click OK. Then what we want to do is copy this formula down by using the drag fill. There are a few ways to do it. Task 38 wants us to go ahead and uh, use the sum formula to find out the, the total sales for quarter one and, uh, for both 2009 and 2010, as well as quarter two, three, and four for each flavor. So in this cursor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my cursor in B3. Instead of typing this formula in manually, I'm gonna go ahead and use the insert function button. And I'm gonna go ahead and type in sum. We'll click okay and okay. So my first number is going to be 2009 B3. I'm going to go ahead and hit tab or just click number two. And then I'm going to go to 2010 and select B3. We'll go ahead and click OK. And it went ahead and added those two numbers. Now I could manually go in and do some for each of these different cells. But what I'm going to do is just copy over the, um, the formula because they're both relative references. So with B3 selected, I'm going to put my cursor in the bottom right hand corner of the cell until I get the black cross. And I'm going to go ahead and click and drag to the right E3. And it went ahead and it, it calculated those numbers for me. Now with that, that range selected, B3 to E3, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to put my cursor in the bottom right hand corner of E3. And I'm just going to click and drag down to E25. And look, it went ahead and copied that formula for us. Task 39 wants us to go ahead and insert a chart. So what we're going to do is go to the combined sales uh, worksheet. And what we want to do is we're going to build a, uh, a chart based upon these sale numbers here. 
Uh, so we'll select E2 to E7. And there, I could select the A range as well, but what I'm going to do is click Insert, and I'm just going to go ahead and select Pi here. And the other part of this is to make sure that um, the, each represented is labeled down here, and notice it just says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So with this chart still selected, I'm going to go ahead and select, uh, click Select Data here on the Chart Tools Design tab. In order to change the different numbers, I'm going to click Edit here on the Horizontal Access Labels, and I'm just going to go ahead and select the names here click OK and notice they went ahead and populated those names for me at the bottom. Task 40 wants us to go ahead and move this chart to a new worksheet named sales chart. So what I'm going to do is there are a few ways to do this. I'm just going to go ahead and right click on the chart and I'm going to click um, move chart here. Here I'm going to go ahead and select new sheet and I'm just going to go ahead and type in sales chart and we'll click OK. Task 41 wants us to go ahead and uh, just rotate this right here. Um, what I'm going to do is select that. I'll go to the Drawing Tools format here at the top. And I'm going to, in the Arrange, click Rotate. And it wants us to rotate it 90 degrees right. Task 42 wants us to go ahead and do a few things. It wants us to select this Smart Art here at the bottom. And we're going to do two things to it. We're going to change it to the pyramid list layout and then we're going to go ahead and change the style so with that selected we have the smart art tools design tab here at the top and what we want to do is click the more layouts here it is a list it is a pyramid my apologies and what we want is this one right here pyramid list so we'll go ahead and select that and select okay notice it went ahead and changed for me and then what i want to do is on the smart art styles we want to click the more drop down here and then we want to apply the sunset uh, scene. So we'll go ahead and select this. If you're not sure, make sure you hover because it will tell you what it's called. Task 43 wants us to go ahead and remove the background on the of the picture on the summary worksheet. So we'll go ahead and select our ice cream image here. With that selected, we get the picture tools format here at the top. So we'll go ahead and select that tab. And what I want to do is go ahead and click remove background. Notice it went ahead and changed that. What we want to do is here is click Keep Changes. Task 44 wants us to go ahead and uh, just make some changes to this image over here on the right. So what we want to do is select the image. We're on the Pictures Tool Format tab here at the top. In the Adjust group, we're going to click the Corrections drop down. And what we want to do is sharpen the image by 50%. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then it's still we're still in the Adjust group and what we want to do is click artistic effects and what we're looking for is the watercolor sponge so we'll go ahead and select that if you're not sure make sure you hover it will tell you what it's called task 45 wants us to go ahead and create a spark line in l3 so what we'll do is we'll click insert here at the top and it wants us to use a line one and our range is going to be c 3 to J3, we'll go ahead and click OK. And then what we want to do is go ahead and just use the drag fill. Notice that my cursor changed to a black cross when I went to the bottom right hand corner of L3. I just want to copy that down. Task 46 wants us to go ahead and save our entire workbook as a PDF. So we'll click File, Export, and Create PDF XPS Document. Create PDF XPS. And what we want to do is make sure that this says PDF here. It doesn't tell us to change the name, but we do want to go ahead and click Options because what we want to do is omit uh, paid document properties and tags. Click OK, and we'll go ahead and click Publish. Make sure that you are in your Gmetrix templates folder. Task 47 wants us to go ahead and remove the duplicate values in this table, so I'll go ahead and select the entire range in this table. What we want to do after we select it is go to the data tab here at the top. And then what we're going to do is hit in the data tools group, click remove duplicates. And it tells us that it wants us to base this based upon year and value only. We'll go ahead and click OK. And tells us it removed 16 duplicate values. We'll click OK. Task 48 wants us to go to A2. And if you look here, it has a comment here. And what it wants us to do is go ahead and delete that. Now there are two ways to do that. You can go to the review tab here at the top or you can right click and just click delete comment. And then what it wants us to do is go ahead and insert a new one. So I'm going to right click 
on that cell A2 and I'm going to click insert comment and a comment that it wants us to do is to type in redundant variance removed. We'll go ahead and click outside of that comment to set it. Task 49 wants us to go ahead and apply multiple filters to this table. So the first thing we want to do is uh, filter category. What we'll do is uh, click the select all to unselect everything. And just go ahead and select what it wants us to here, which tells us down here what we need to select. And then what we want to do is on the pharmaceuticals, um, go ahead and click the drop down for the filter, text filters. And then what we want is ends with. And we have two, so we'll go ahead and down here also select ends with and EX and LUX. We'll click OK. Task 50 wants us to go ahead and do a multi-level sort. So what we'll do is we'll select our range A4 to D106. Then we'll go to the data tab here at the top and the sort and filter will select sort. And then the first one is variant. Make sure you have my data has headers so that you can see uh, variant. And then it says ascending order so we're good there. And then also year. Click OK. Task 51 wants us to go ahead and select our range C3 to J26. And after we select that range, we want to go ahead and apply conditional formatting. So we're on the Home tab. We're in the Styles group. We'll click the conditional formatting drop down box. And what we want to do is select data bars. And it says it's a gradient fill, blue. Task 52 wants us to go ahead and select the range C3 to J26. And what we're going to do is apply two conditional formatting rules to this range. We're on the Home tab. We're in the Styles group. And what we want to do is select conditional formatting, highlight cells. And then what we want to select is greater than for the first one. And it's going to be 200,000. And what we want to do is uh, have the display with green fill and text. So we'll go ahead and select that one and we'll click OK. We also want to go back and apply the second one. So we're going to go ahead and we have our range still selected. We're on the home tab, conditional formatting, highlight, and then it's less than for this one. This time it's going to be 10,000. And uh, just with a red border, we'll click OK.